Well, the final section that we'll look at in chapter uh, eight on probability is on the normal distribution. And um, this is a distribution that's unlike any other that we've seen before. Um, and, uh, and, and the reason being is it's, it's a continuous probability distribution. We'll get to that in a minute. Now, the normal distribution is probably the most uh, used distribution of all the probability distributions. And we'll talk about why for, in just a minute here. Uh, what we'll do is to interpret z-scores in this section and then find areas under the standard normal curve. And then uh, take a look at some applications of the normal distribution. So let's uh, first kind of take a step back and define what we want to <clears throat> examine here in, in section 8.4. In, in slide number three, uh, we can say that if a random variable x can assume values corresponding to any of the points contained in an interval, then x is a continuous random variable, meaning, meaning we can put in any real number we want. We can put in fractions. We can put in irrational numbers. It doesn't matter as opposed to something like the binomial distribution where the x values had to be whole numbers. And uh, remember when we talked about the, bi the binomial distribution and the discrete uniform distribution, we talked about the notion of a probability mass function. Well, if x is a continuous random variable, the formula, the function associated with that is called a probability density function. And the reason being is the, think of it this way, the the little sticks that we made are all densely packed together to form some kind of uh, curve. <clears throat> and we call that curve the, the density curve. All right, so let's define a, uh, what we're going to talk about here. We can say that um, a continuous random variable with a probability density function, and notice we have it written there, f of x. Now, uh, that uh, if a if a if if a random variable has uses this probability density function, we say x is a normal random variable. <clears throat> now I know that's a that's a kind of a uh, awesome looking uh, function there. Uh, the 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 good the good part is we'll never have to compute with that. We have some ways to get around that. Now um, in slide number five, we want to kind of standardize things so we can actually, like I said, use use other the means than other than just pure computa computational defined probabilities. We can say that if z is a normal random variable with probability density function, and notice there we define that as f of z, and that's kind of a simplified version of the probability density function we just saw, then z is a standard normal random variable. And the values of z in this case will generally for, for what we're going to do, uh, range from values from about negative 3.5 to 3.5. Now let's talk about how we get these z scores so we can uh, uh, compute probabilities. Uh, we, uh, if we let x be a normal random variable with a mean mu and a standard deviation sigma, then the standard normal random variable z is given by, and notice the, the, um, the formula for the z-score here. We take whatever x value we have, the known value of x, we subtract away the mean, and then that difference then we divide by the standard deviation. So that gives us that standard z-score that we're going to need. <coughs> Excuse me. Now let's talk about some of the properties of the standard normal distribution. Notice here's the graph of it. And like I said, usually the values that we use are ranged from about um, negative three and a half to three and a half, and you can see why. Once they get uh, outside of negative three to three, the values get very close to zero. Um, another uh, another um, uh, property of the standard normal curve is that the total area under this curve is exactly one. That's analogous to adding up all the probabilities and getting exactly one, like we did with the discrete random variables. But now we're talking about the area under a curve. And notice this is that bell-shaped curve. Maybe you heard the term the bell curve. That's always the kind of curve we get when we, when we use the normal distribution. <clears throat> Slide number eight has some more properties. First, the mean, the median, and the mode are all centered in the middle of the graph. You know that the, uh, the mode is because the middle is the highest point. And you know that it's also the median 
and that it divides the area under the curve into two equal areas. And you know it's the uh, it's since it's it's symmetric, the the mean is going to be the probability weighted average. And like I said, the graph is symmetric about the mean. The maximum value occurs at mu equals zero. Now this remember this is for the standard normal curve z. And for data that has a normal distribution, notice here what, what can, we can say. About 68% of the data lies within one standard deviation of the mean. Now let me explain what I mean by that. We're saying if we take uh, some value minus uh, z times its standard deviation or some value plus z times the standard deviation, this would encompass about 68% of the normal curve. All right, that would go from uh, uh, minus a standard deviation to plus a standard